Guys, welcome to my channel. We are reading The Last Laugh by K.R. Alexander. I did get permission from Scholastic to do this. Um, we are on page, well, not page, but uh, chapter 13. And that is going to be on page 64. So we're just going to start reading. Chapter 13. How'd you sleep, twerp? I asked Genevieve. Then next morning, she was already at the breakfast table, halfway through her cereal with the book open beside her. Knowing her, she'll probably, she's probably been up for the last couple hours. Meanwhile, I feel like I've been hit by a garage truck filled with diapers. Fine, she says. She looks up from her cereal and raises an eyebrow. You look like you didn't. I glance around the room. Mom and Dad are in the kitchen and Sarah is still sleeping. I sit close to Genevieve and I drop my voice to a whisper. Did you, um, did you see anything last night? To her credit, she doesn't laugh or raise her voice. She whispers back, what do you mean? There was a clown, the doll. No, a different one. One of those stupid little ceramic figurines. Where is it? I hesitate. I don't know. When I turned the light on, it was gone. She gives me a look. A look that very clearly says, I'm four years younger than you, and even I can see that you're being ridiculous. That's not possible, she says. You must have been hallucinating. I, yeah, probably, unless, do you think Sarah? Think I'm what? Sarah asks, stepping onto, into the room. <sighs> Is ever going to get out of bed? I quickly cover or if we're going to have to cover your chores. Or if we're going to have to cover your chores. Right. She says, you're whispering about chores. I know when you two are plotting something. We aren't the ones who are plotting. At least not anymore. Genevieve and I stay silent, studying her closely. Will she admit it? Will she slip up? Our silence only makes Sarah laugh. Well, whatever it is, it is, it better be good, she says, because you know my motto. I don't get mad. I get even. In tones, Genevieve, you, we know. Sarah winks and heads into the kitchen to get breakfast. It had to be her, I whisper. She practically admitted it just now. She's getting even. The problem is, there is no way she would go anywhere near a clown, even if she wanted revenge. Genevieve says, reaching over the tabs of my temple, I think it's all in your head. You're probably right, I admit. Not that it makes me feel any better. Chapter 14. Gareth comes over late in the afternoon. I spend the whole morning cleaning my room and fully expecting to see a clown peering up at me from the clothes piles at some point, but nothing like that happened. So clowns, huh? Gareth asks. I'm on the floor by my bed, notebooks and textbooks spread out around me while he has his stuff spread out on my bed. I glance under the bed where, when he says it. All I find are shadows and wadded up clothes I didn't want to put away. Yep, I reply. Stupid, huh? He shrugs. I don't know. Clowns are creepy. Those painted smiles. No thanks. You're scared of clowns? That's a new one. I wouldn't say scared. More just cautious. I don't trust them. Like, who in their right minds decided one day, you know what? I'm going to be a professional clown and scare children. Can't be trusted. I chuckle. I've known Gareth basically my whole life, but... I didn't know he was afraid of clowns, because I know him well enough to know that when he gets all explain, explainy like that, it means he's trying to rationalize something anyway, away. Gareth is tall and Filipino, with choppy black hair that's currently dyed light blue, and the bad habit of saying what he really thinks, usually in the worst situation possible. This means he gets in a lot of trouble in school and around the popular kids that said he's also the smartest kid in our class. So the teachers let his comments slide. And he does jitsu, so the popular kids leave him alone. 
Usually. Tell that to my grandma, I say. Her bedroom is full of them. Really? That's strange, even for her. He's been over to her house once or twice, so he knows what her house is like. I know. And now you think they're, what, following you? No, that's stupid, I say. I think Sarah stole a few and is hiding them around the house. I just have to ignore the part about them appearing and disappearing when she isn't around. Right. Well, if you get too scared, you can stay over at my place. Possess clown free zone. Thanks, I reply. We work on homework for the rest of the afternoon and then play video games until dark. It all feels so normal that by the time Gareth packs up to leave for the night, I've completely forgot about the clowns. See you tomorrow, he says at the building's front door. And keep an eye out for those creepy clowns. So much for that. I roll my eyes. Thanks for reminding me. He laughs and then heads towards his house. He only lives a few blocks away, so he's over all the time. I watch him go until he's around the corner. For some reason, I really don't want to go back inside. Even though everyone is home, I know what's going back inside means. In a few hours, it will be time for bed. Time to close my eyes. Sleep just makes me feel defenseless. Again, I don't think the clowns are after me. It's more that... I don't trust Sarah not to sneak in during the middle of the night. Maybe I should get a lock for my door. Before I can convince myself to go go find hardware store, I turn back into the complex and head up to the stairway stairwell. When I round the corner at the second floor, I stop. There, halfway up the stairs, another clown doll sits on the gross floral carpet. This one is entirely made out of fabric. One of those old-fashioned rag dolls with red twine for hair and big wide button eyes its suit is blue and covered in felt stars its gloves and shoes are red as its nose red like blood red like the smile painted on its face its hands are folded neatly in his lap and legs crossed as if it was waiting for me the moment i look at it its head tilts to the side as if it's watching me considering me my heart stops just for a minute then i convince myself it was his gravity, and let out a growl. Sarah, I want Sarah a little louder. I call out, nice try. I try not to consider how Sarah managed to sneak up and down the stairs without me hearing. I step past the clown and walk, not run, walk up the rest of the stairs to the con to our con to our condo. A part of me considers kicking the clown down the stairs, but I don't want to touch it. And if it was Grandma's, I don't want to get in trouble for damaging it. Actually, on that thought, maybe I should bring it inside. Who knows if someone might steal it before Sarah can pick it up again. Then we'd all be in big trouble. I turn back around to grab it, but the clown is already gone. Chapter 15 I do run up the stairs this time. I run all the way up to our unit, and when I get back inside, I lock the door behind me. All the locks. Everything's okay, champ? Dad asks from the living room. Yep, fine, I lie. Before I can ask any more questions, I head back into my room. All I can do is pace back and forth, my mind racing. It couldn't have been Sarah. It couldn't. I had only gone up five steps before turning around, and that stairwell is loud. I can hear a chihuahua coming down the stairs from three stories up. There's no way a human, either a child or an adult, could have taken the clown without me hearing. There's nowhere to hide. I would have heard the door open if someone was coming out of our condo. Had it fallen? But no, it wasn't at the bottom of the steps. It's not like it would have rolled around the corner to disappear down the next flight. There is only one answer, one simple, yet impossible answer. The clown doll had moved all by itself. It had gotten up and walked down the stairs while I wasn't looking. It's the only way I would have heard any other footsteps. But I wouldn't have heard something as light as a stuffed doll. But how? Why? <sighs> Was it a smart doll? Some sort of new animatronic device created to freak out kids no that makes even less sense 
a lot less sense than Garrett's silly warning possessed clown dolls. Is that it? Am I being haunted? The moment the thought crosses my mind, I stop my pacing. It feels like this heavy weight just settles on my shoulders because if I'm being haunted, I have no idea what to do. A circle of salt lights some incense. I'm not about to search the internet for what to do because I don't trust anything I read there. I read there. <laughs> um, you have to tell Grandma. It's too late to call her, though. So I'm going to have to survive the night. Should I talk to Genevieve? Sarah? No. Neither of them has said they've seen anything. Sarah would laugh at me. And Genevieve, well... I don't want to get her involved. I don't want to be the reason she's at risk. The clowns are after me. Only me. The question is, what do they want? Chapter 16. After I scored every inch of my room to ensure it's clown-free, I pile a bunch of books and clothes against my closed door before going to sleep. It's not a lock, but it's the best I've got. Even then, I sleep with the light on. Even then, I barely sleep at all. When I do fall asleep, it's a fitful torment filled with nightmares. Nightmares of tiny clowns clawing at my face, of hundreds of clown dolls spilling from my closet or scrumbling under my bed. Nightmares of the man blowing, booming chuckles. <laughs> nightmares that make me wake up, thrashing against my blankets and positive I met my end. Finally, shortly before dawn, I fell asleep and stay asleep. When I wake up, it's daylight, and I'm not alone in my room. I can feel it before I even see it. The sensation of eyes on me. The feelings of being watched that terribly tingle in the back of my neck that says, I'm not alone. My heart races, and fresh sweat breaks over my skin as I peer over my covers. There, on my dresser, is a clown. I saw in the stairwell, along with the porcelain figurine I saw at the night before. They just sit there, staring at me, their blank eyes, painted eye, painted smile, somehow malicious. For a moment, I just sit there, too, waiting to wake up. Then I look over to my door. My clothes and books are, are all dis undisturbed, still resting against the clo closed door. There's no way anyone could have gotten in here and gotten back out and moved the those back into place. No way. Sarah... Could have done it in the middle of the night. I also have no idea how the dolls would have gone in. That's when I feel it. A slight breeze. I glance over to see that my window is open just a crack. I know I closed it last night. Chills race down my spine. Did the clown dolls climb up to my room? Were they hanging out beside my window? Watching me toss and turn waiting for me to fall asleep? <laughs> this is so weird. This is the weirdest story. Sorry, guys. I just, I love this author. They, like, oh my gosh. Um, alrighty. For some reason, that thought turns my fear to anger. Before I could stop myself, I leap out of my bed and walk over to the dresser. I grab the dolls, try, try not to notice how warm they are, as if they are alive. As if they have pulse. I try not to notice how they seem to swarm in my hands. But that has to be my imagination. It has to be. I head over to the window and manage to yank it open. I hold the dolls out the window. The ground five stories below. If you can climb, let's hope you can fly. I growl. I toss them hard away from the apartment into the street. I don't watch them fall. I slam the window shut and turn around. Then lean against it, panting hard. I wait to hear cars honk or slam as the dolls crash against the garbage can. Silence. When I finally turn and look outside, peering down at the street, I don't see a thing. All right. Chapter 17. So, let me get this straight, Gareth asks at recess. We're standing near the edge of the playground, as far from others' ears as possible. We're also right beside a hedge, and I keep staring at it, expecting to see glass eyes staring back out. You think there are clown dolls chasing after you, like possessed by ghosts 
or something? Like, for real, for real? I nod. My head throbs from the lack of sleep and the stress. I made myself comb the, s the street before catching the bus to school. I didn't see a single sign of dolls, but I feel their eyes on me as I search. For real, for real, I admit it. Gareth whistles. You know, I was kidding when I suggested that yesterday, like a joke. You know, like the one I'm pretty certain you're pulling on me. It's not a joke, I say. I wish it was. I really do. I flaming petrocolo his eyes widen. So, here's the thing, Gareth. And I... Gar Gareth and I play a lot of practical jokes on each other. It's why we became friends. Sometimes these jokes involve really elaborate stories. One time he had convinced me that his younger sister had been selected to perform on the European Song Contest and had flown off to Norway. In fact, she'd just gone to summer camp in Pennsylvania. Another time I conducted an elaborate lie about how our third grade teacher, Miss Hawkins, was actually an alien. I even doctor, uh, doctored some photos to give fake evidence of him entering the flying saucer and having three heads. When the game got too far, however, we decided we needed to face to single that it was over. That we were telling the truth. Otherwise, we realized we'd stop trusting each other entirely. Which almost happened after I brought Gareth some green slime. I got at the dollar store and said, I found it at Mr. Hawkins' desk. The phrase was something ridiculous. Flaming patrocle. When it really stinks, sinks in that I'm telling the truth, that Garrick slings down onto the ground. What are you going to do, he asks. It's how I know he believes me, and it loosens a knot between my shoulders. I hadn't known was there until just now. I don't know, I say. I threw them out of the window. I'm hoping they got run over. But I didn't see them after. Maybe they were cleaned up by the street sweepers. They weren't the only ones, though. Honestly, the only thing I can think of doing is talking to my grandma. If they were hidden in her room, maybe she knows how to stop them from showing up again. Or she'll think you've got... You've lost it, he suggests. Not helpful. You wouldn't believe it if you weren't experiencing it, he says. He bites his nails for the moment, considering so they're just like watching you, right? Yeah, that's good. Why is that good? He throws up his hands as if it should be obvious. They aren't attacking you, that's why. If they're just following you around, I don't know. Maybe they're just lonely or something. You really think so? No, not really, but I was trying to make you feel better. Mission unsuccessful. Before I can ask him what he thinks I should do, he, he always had a brain for elaborate stories and loves reading horror books. The bell rings. Time for the next class. Do you want me to go with you to your grandma's tonight? He asks as we make our way towards the building. No thanks, though. No. Thanks, so. though. We get closer to the front door. That tingle on my neck intensifies. I turn. There, in the hinge, I see a calico print of a clown doll's costume. I yank Garrett's arm, spinning him around to see. But just like, just like all the other times, the moment I back, I look back and have Gareth look with me, the clown is nowhere to be seen. Alright, that is the end of this video, guys. I will see you guys in the next video.